welcome everyone to another edition of Dissolving the Divide. This is our fifth segment. I'm Leslie Powers. I'm here with my co-host, Derek Bartolicelli, and we have a wonderful guest today, Nate Cap. Um, so just for a recap, Dissolving the Divide, we're here to face some of the ways that our, our humanity is divided, how we are separating from each other through polarity, and creating unneeded, unnecessary conflict and distraction. So we're here to dissolve that division, find the synthesis, the synthesis and the harmony between the polarities. And we are talking now about our the foundation of this, which is the division within. I'll send it to you, Derek. Yeah, that's all about the foundation. And I'm so pleased and honored to have uh, Nate join us to kind of, you know, get us into the external world from outside of the mind, you know, nice and balanced, you know, covering, you know, what we've, you know, discussed with the feminine masculine with Maria, much love to her and, and Rodney for the astro astrological aspects of all that. And then some of the hidden occulted, you know, aspects within ourselves and, and everything. And Brandon Spencer, who I'm actually in a hotel room with him right now but he's not here he's he's at work but we're in las vegas right now wow. broadcasting live and direct and uh yeah nid cap is also part of the one great work network as well as leslie powers he has a podcast with uh brennan martin some of the times you guys do your own thing as well uh, with cubbyhole and uh, the seed conference and that you know see truth academy and so much wonderful stuff going on with that and you are outcasting as well after we've already done and well you've started before that but uh we're, all three of us have been included in Corey's end of slavery summit you know that happened uh, last december 2022 and we are the 13th of friday what a day right so yeah without further ado nate uh thank you so much for for being here <laughs> Yeah, and I know you. you got a lot to say and a lot to share with us on a very profound levels. So yeah, brother, <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I uh, really oh, yeah. appreciate that a lot. Uh, you know, so welcome. This, this work uh, is not easy, and it's not easy to um, you know get out and talk about this information. It takes a lot of courage, and I really appreciate you guys, uh, you know, starting up this um, dissolving the divide because uh, it is to me, one of the biggest, if not the biggest problems in our world. And uh, so, yeah, man, I, I appreciate you guys having me on your show. And, um, you know, uh, as you said, my name is Nate Cap, and I am a spiritual investigator. I'm a spiritual teacher. I'm a spiritual, uh, you know, um, invest or uh, <laughs> detective I am, I am, Inspector. Every, yeah, I am a, yes, uh, I don't know why I'm stumbling over myself, um, no, but, but, uh, but yeah, I, I created the cubby hole and I work with, uh, Douglas and Brandon Martin, um, um, they, they also co-host and also, um, I have my outcasting show and both of these shows, both of these podcasts, uh, one being video, one being audio, which is the cubbyhole. Um, both are all about restoring critical uh, knowledge for the advancement of human evolution uh, with the goal to help people move in the direction of freedom. So um, what you guys are doing, uh, trying to bridge the gap, uh, dissolving the divide, I mean, that's that's what it's all about. So I'm excited to uh, you know, get into these topics. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So you're quite versed in a lot of esoteric traditions and knowledge, including Freemasonry and symbology. And I'd love to hear more about um, what comes up for you in, in within that knowledge base that helps us understand ourselves and the ways that we um, have internal divisions that can then lead to out external division. Yeah, so it is, you know, when it comes to uh, Freemasonry, Freemasonry is an esoteric 
tradition or it's an occult tradition. Um, it's a mystery tradition because it's, uh, you know, it's something I really like about Derek is he's very into wordplay. So um, <laughs> my story, right? So uh, it's all about helping us understand the internal story. And that is why it is, uh, all, there is only one hero and that is you, the individual. So um, getting into Freemasonry, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, an enormous topic. It's an enormous um, tradition to dive into, but uh, I think it's important to understand the brain uh, first and foremost before getting into the topic of Freemasonry, because if we don't understand the dyna dynamics of the right and left brain, uh, then it becomes very difficult to be able to uh, really uh, talk about this this topic. So I think it's important to understand that consciousness, uh, first and foremost, can be broken down uh, into the two hemispheres of the brain. Um, uh, the aspects of the brain being, you know, the, the sacred feminine right brain and the sacred feminine left brain. And um, when you look at, uh, especially if you're, if you're going into the first degree of Freemasonry, the entered apprentice, this is where you're going to see a scientific reflection of your soul. Uh, and by learning the aspects of the right and left hemispheres, um, you will start to understand the symbolism within uh, these, these what, what are called tracing boards. And tracing boards are visual uh, pieces of art that um, are drawn up in a scientific uh, measurement uh, over thousands of years that are stored in one image that uh, when you bring enough knowledge of the brain, of the mind to this type of information, you will start to reveal so much more about who you truly are and how you can communicate with those who uh, put that information stored into those symbols and that doesn't mean you're going to, you know, communicate uh, with the dead. It just means that there is communication from the past, from our elders, from the ancient Egyptian elders, especially, who have preserved knowledge into these symbols um, as a form of heritage that we can uh, dive into and uh, reveal as we uh, learn more and more. Uh, knowledge about those particular symbols. Um, so when you're thinking about the uh, the right and left hemispheres of the brain, these both studying both of these hemispheres is like studying um, the, you know, because it's about understanding dualism. We can't understand the one without the two. So you can't understand the whole brain without understanding both hemispheres. And when um, when we're looking at the brain in correspondence to, let's say, the two, two pillars, right, in Freemasonry, the pillars uh, represent a, um, a way in which uh, we build our way up, you know, because it's about raising in consciousness. So as we build our pillars uh, up from the ground, what, what we're doing is we're working on aspects of consciousness. That being, you know, if you're looking at the right brain, uh, this would be about, um, you know, creativity or imagination or empathy or uh you know big picture thinking and uh, this is about the receptive energy and if you yeah that's uh, yeah that's the tarot card um uh that you know and, and that's the other thing tarot is another mystery tradition that uh goes hand in hand with freemasonry and the uh tree of kabbalah but um and it's good to study 
uh, those traditions in conjunction with each other. But yeah. so, so, so as you, um, as you start to work on, uh, well, let's, let's look at the other uh, pillar, you know, the left brain pillar, this would, you know, so you have the right pillar, which is the pillar of Boaz or the pillar of beauty. And then you have the pillar of strength, the, the left brain pillar. Um, so you have a light pillar and you have a, a, a dark pillar. And it's important to understand uh, something so simple and sacred, which is the pr the principle, the hermetic principle of gender, because uh, and and I, when I say gender, I'm talking about mental gender, uh, but but you can understand it on all planes if you really thoroughly uh, dive in and, and study this principle. And this principle is so powerful to understand. Um, and not not that all the principles of the uh, hermetic tradition aren't powerful to understand, uh, because they really are all important in conjunction with each other. But in uh, when you're trying to understand these two pillars, um, the uh, the right pillar is the dark pillar. The the left pillar is the uh, light pillar, and you have to understand why that is. Well, it's because the uh, right pillar, the dark pillar, is the the feminine, the sacred feminine energy that is receptive. It's submissive. It is the um, the pillar of openness. And then the pillar that is on the left, um, that is associated with the left brain, this pillar is associated with light. This pillar is associated with, um, uh, you know, uh, penetration. Okay, so to to uh, penet the the light light is always penetrative, um, and one of the ways that it, it's really funny because one of the ways that I really woke up to this principle was <clears throat> when you think about names that are associated with these uh, these principles. Because see, there's two principles in one. You have the sacred feminine principle, and you have the sacred masculine principle within one principle of mental gender. Mm -hmm. and so uh when i when i first was waking up to this i associated I, I i looked at the sun and i realized okay the sun is light it's a penetrative force right so therefore um as it hits the you know two objects that we know very well especially earth earth is uh submissive to that light and so is the moon well, there's a reason both of those, both of these, you know, uh, celestial objects, you know, being the uh, orbs, you know, the uh, the Earth and the Moon, they're both uh, receptive of that light. That means they're they are a sacred feminine principle. That is why lunar is associated with the feminine and uh, Mother Earth, you know, Mother being a feminine name. Um, the this is a uh, this is a uh, submissive principle. And so that means that, um, you know, the light is received. It is submissive to the light by the sun. So when people, you know, when people think of uh, the incest uh, of Jesus and Mother Mary, well, really, it's what you're trying to understand is that it is the sun penetrating Mother Earth by light. That's that's really it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's important to see it that way. Well, that's it's the same. It's the same thing with these uh, these two pillars that we're talking about in the first degree of Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. And when these two pillars, when you work on the two hemispheres of the brain, both um, the pillars, both of the hemispheres, when they come together, when the brain is firing in the corpus callosum in the middle. Uh, when the hem when the two pillars are coming together or raising the one in the middle, that is the wisdom pillar. That is the sacred union. That is the marriage within. Mm -hmm. And um, this is this is uh, where we start to uh, you know dissolve the divide, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about um, you know raising that the because it's about. Uh, it's about understanding thoughts, emotions, and actions. And as we start to uh, 
take in that information, you know, the sacred feminine, taking in the information, processing the information, and then have the output. So it's the trivium method, right? This is the the holy trinity. Um, and we start to um, work, you know, uh, every, for me, I mean, it's every day that I'm working to try to merge both of those hemispheres together. Uh, because it is, you know, like we were talking about earlier before we got on here, I was telling Derek and Leslie that, um, you know, just like a, a, a exoteric outer marriage takes work by, by both the, the man and the woman, it takes lots of work together to, to keep that bond uh, till the end till the end of their, you know, life. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing internally. Uh, that is, and, and, you know, this is something that, you know, I've talked about on the cubby hole, which is that um, we have to understand that uh, this is not something that we just do a little bit. This is something that, uh, you know, marriage is, is the, you know, the alchemical wedding. It is the, um, it is when both of these pillars come together uh, by how much work we put in uh, to each hemisphere and the, the aspects uh, that, that need work constantly. You know, like for me personally, uh, I, when I came into Freemasonry, I was more right brained. I had to I had to go way further into the left brain uh, and I had to learn. I had to get, you know, uh, educate myself in literature that's a left brain aspect science that's a left brain aspect uh, math and uh, writing and reading especially reading oh my god I was all so against that but once I started to really put that all together I started to understand this internal marriage mm -hmm. and um I, I really want to uh I I, I don't want to take up the airspace if you guys want to chime well, in please. I'm really curious about you know what is the work that we each should be doing to strengthen both hem both hemispheres of our brain, right? To strengthen the masculine and feminine. You mentioned math, reading, literature as under the the left hemisphere, which would be the masculine, correct? Right. And right. So maybe expand on that. You know what? Because concrete actions that people can take, you know, to develop this balanced brain that we're seeking, so that we can. Um, have wisdom so that we can face like controversial topics and triggering topics, you know, from a place of center point. And, and I think that what you're talking about is really crucial. So there's, please expand on the masculine, developing the masculine and then the feminine or the, you know, the, the feminine aspects as well in terms of tasks. Right. So um, when it comes to the sacred masculine, it's about uh, recognizing that if um, you know, and I think I think it's really important to understand this uh, through the triune brain, um, because the triune brain is a three-in-one brain, and this this is about understanding that we have a lower brain, uh, the oldest part of our brain, which is the R complex or the reptile brain, crocodile brain, um, the brain stem, mm -hmm. the brain stem. This is the lower brain stem that is uh, uh, associated with ego, uh, associated with survival instincts. Uh, this is, you know, the fight or flight. And then we have the mammalian brain and the mammalian brain or the limbic system is associated with emotions, feelings. And this is also associated with the sacred feminine, the, the right brain so um when we understand that the left brain uh so you have the two hemispheres of the neocortex the newest part of the brain right so when you understand that the left brain is largely facilitated by the uh, lower part of the um the trying brain the r complex and then the mammalian brain is uh largely facilitated uh or facilitating the uh right brain um then you you have to understand okay well what what are the the things that um uh can 
make the, the brain uh, develop or not develop. And I think it's important to understand that uh, putting the effort into, um, uh, you know, I mean, what 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 I want to say is, you know, what you're talking about with the uh, the aspects. Uh, I want I'm going to get to that, um, but I think it's important to understand that uh, the left brain can can become very uh, dominant. And, um, you know, if we're doing too much in learning about, uh, you know, certain aspects like, OK, for instance, this is this is I think this is a really good way. This is something that uh, I find to be very interesting. It, it, it's a, dis a discovery that I had on my own um, when uh, I did my presentation on relumination of the imagination. I talked about uh this hero's journey um, through a symbol, a, a very simple symbol, the tr the equilateral triangle. And um, I think it's important to note that when we're born, we're born in right brain. We're born in the right brain. And mm -hmm. why is that? Well, it's because, well, for one, it's uh, it, it, it's dealing with the sacred feminine. It's dealing, we're, we're born into an openness. We're born into not knowing anything. We're born into, uh, you know, just have, we have some intuition to a degree. Um, we have the ability to observe, um, but we don't really understand much. And we're naive. We don't really, <laughs> you know, have any way of critical thinking. Um, we don't have science. We don't have uh mathematics we don't have literature or writing or any of that stuff so um and i think derek will like this one um if you haven't seen the the reillumination presentation but uh because it's it's wordplay right it's about understanding that if once we're in the right brain there we have this ability to leave the right brain the nest right so to speak uh, to go in search for the light of the left brain aspects. Um, and we're doing this, we do this we by um, uh, going, you know, starting our journey. We start our journey a lot sooner than we think, but we don't, you know, consciously start it until later in life. Well, you know, I'd say, uh, uh, unfortunately, not not too many people do. Um, at least these days, it doesn't seem that way. But the point is, is we leave the the left, or I'm sorry, we leave the right, and we have left to the left brain to have you know leave the right to you know to have left mm -hmm. to the to the left brain, right? So we're leaving what behind? We're leaving right to mm -hmm. to understand left. We're leaving, you know, in anything associated with right. We have to think about it phonetically. Or we're leaving, uh, you could say right is associated with the creator, right? You can say right is associated with direction. You can say right is associated with morality. I mean, you know, uh, creator it's and wishing. morality are synonymous. But the point is, is we're leaving to go in a different direction to understand. Because you can't understand the, you know, the one without the two. So we're leaving the nest to go, you know, to this place of, you know, learning. So we're, le you know, um, some of us stay in the right brain. Um, you know, a lot of people are using their imagination, become very naive, become very religious because uh, they've never gone to the left brain where you can become healthy uh, or, you know, learn the healthy side of skepticism. This is why so many people who are more right brained are more religious because they've never left the the nest to go in search for those left brain aspects right so if you if you're you know uh imagining a equilateral triangle you're you know from the bottom right uh corner that's your right brain and then now you're leaving over to the left brain and um you are uh you're going here to learn uh what what the left brain has to offer you're going to learn 
the um, you know the aspects of the left brain, be in the science to learn uh, you know the um, the the physical reality, uh, the five senses. You're going to learn um, you know literature to understand uh, you know the world that you live in uh, better. Uh, to understand yourself better. You're going to the left brain to find light because you're going from the, remember what I said in Freemasonry, you have the the, the dark pillar and the sacred feminine, and now you're moving over to the left. And even if you look at the um, the tracing board, the Ender Apprentice tracing board, the ladder goes to the left over to the um, the light pillar. So, but but anyway, so once you get here to this this corner of the equilateral triangle, this is where we can learn to do the uh, learn the healthy ways of the left brain. However, um, what can happen is the left brain can become overly dominant, um, and we can you know reside in materialism. And this is what happens to a lot of people. This is what creates atheism. This is what creates, you know, cer a certain type of solipsism. This is what creates, uh, you know, uh, this is what leads to scientism. Um, but we have this ability to go up this, um, this because it's not it's not about going up just from the the left brain. It's about okay, you have both brains now. Um, uh, do you want to have a holistic brain? Well, you're going to have to go back to your right brain, strengthen that if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're working on both of those aspects and you're working your way up to the apex of your, uh, uh, you know, consciousness to, you know, have that holy wedding. And um, that is you know, you know the, these these aspects, you know, having that art and that creativity and the imagination uh, in conjunction with intellect. I mean, this is this is what creates intelligence, right? Because it's about understanding that um, you have this, you know, generative principle in the in the right brain. And if you don't have the intellect, if you haven't gone in search for the intellect, um then you're you're not going to find that that sacred union you're not going to raise yourself to an apex of uh balance mm -hmm. um and so uh, this this is uh there there's a lot more to this but um yeah. you know it's very 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 powerful when you can see it in just one symbol or a symbol yeah, I wanted to add something that I think, you know, um, complements this a bit. I was at a workshop with um, a neuropsychologist, um, Dr. Alan Shore, and he was he specializes in trauma for children. And he was talking about how when babies are born, they're right brain dominant until about 18 months old. And that this makes them very acute. This is based on, you know, survival because a baby's uh, survival is dependent on their mother, their caregiver there. And so there's an attunement to body language, to tone, to eye gazing, to all, you know, the, for t you know, touch. And so the dominance for that period of a, of a child's life, that right brain dom domination is really important for survival. And then around, you know, 18 months or, you know, before, a little before the language skills start to develop, you know, and the left brain starts to come online to create, you know, speech and more, you know, different kinds of um, intellectual functions. Right. But what can happen is, let's say a, a baby is in a, an abusive or neglectful environment, or there's a lot of chaos going around, then it is possible for a baby to actually like dissociate. So babies cry, they, you know, do what they can to uh, get the attention to get the response from the caregiver. And if it doesn't work, they can go into um, you know high cortisol levels and appear externally to be um, still and calm, but when they check the internal functions, their cortisol levels are super high. They're highly stressed out, and so this sets up you know sometimes a delay 
you know, in the development of the left brain functions and can lead to difficulties later, you know, in education um, where kids are very vigilant, where they're, um, you know, having difficulties calming the that right brain imbalance. So I just wanted to add that insight a little bit. Yeah, it's really interesting because uh, like even for the uh, first seven years, uh, six or seven years, um, children are in what's called the theta stage. Mm -hmm. And that means they're, you know, just using their imagination. That's why um, it's good to let children, it doesn't mean like don't teach children, you know, left brain aspects when they're young, but it just means like um, this is the time where children really are developing their way of uh, uh, understanding their uh, their imagination and how to use it. Um, it is, you know, and obviously when we as parents or adults or um, teachers introduce them to, uh, or when we're introduced to uh, the left brain aspects, that is when our imagination can start to take uh, the, what we learn and really put everything together in a uh, concise way where where we can find the understanding. Um, but one of the things that is really uh, interesting is that, you know, the idea of indoctrination yeah. um, from a very early age, and I would say even, you know, in the uh, time of being in the womb, children are already being taught um, how to be in the left brain without even being uh, allowed to be in their right brain fully when they're a child, because um, they are, you know, as soon as you put them into these, uh, uh, you know, slave education camps, um, they uh, are already learning a a left brain aspects and they're not really, you know, what school do you know that is teaching uh, the hermetic principles or natural law, yeah. none. Um, mm-hmm. But but there's a reason for that because they want children to be rooted in materialism. And, uh, you know, even think about a long time ago, I, I, I have never heard of this being done in the past 20 years or so, but I know uh, family members of mine who, um, and I've heard this from many other people that, children used to, who were left-handed, used to be uh, smacked on the hand if they were using their left hand because they knew that it was using their right brain. And so they wanted them to use their left brain so they would use their right hand. And, um, you know, if you go back into ancient Egypt, um, it's very interesting because, uh, you know, the statues... um, uh, show. I mean, this is this is definitely something that a lot of people don't really know or understand. But left foot forward means evolution, oh. and that's because you're you're evolving from your uh, your right and moving, you know, with the action forward, you know, with your left. And so it's a it's very interesting, and obviously, uh, no one is advanced as you know these. Uh, e- e- Egyptian or ancient Egyptian elders, uh, especially, um, you know, uh, way in the beginning of the the solar mythos or the stellar mm-hmm. mythos. Um, that's a whole another topic. But mm-hmm. once you start to study that, uh, the you know the ways that these people understood, you really start to see. Oh, they really understood balance. They really understood that children need to be taught natural law. So Um, what I notice with the trends in school is that, um, well, first of all, I wanted to say that there are critical windows for learning. There's critical windows for impressionability, like language development. And the first five years is a critical period. So if children learn, uh, you know, second or third languages, they learn really fast in those early years. And then once they leave this window, it's a little bit harder for them to, you know, learn. And that the school system, though, even in kindergarten is 
putting an increased focus on uh, academic knowledge, like left brain activity. Right. They're reducing social interaction, social emotional activities, art, creative activities. Yep. And there's a trend in all the schools all the way up to reduce art classes and music and all of that right brain development. Yeah. So it just shows that, I think, an agenda to that imbalance, to create imbalance. Being. Right. And, and this is uh, the reason that is, is because, you know, if you think about um, left brain dominance, um, this creates a master think uh, and uh, government um, uh, um, uh, structure or government, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, um, like an infrastructure. Um, well, it, well it, 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 it's, it's a support. It creates the support in the mind because the thing is, is we have these installments, these programs, like mm -hmm. what you're talking about. And what happens to the brain uh, from a very early age is that this left brain becomes dominant. Has, it creates a master think, master slave relationship within the mind. And then what that does uh, when the left brain becomes too dominant, it starts to suppress the, the right brain. It starts to suppress the emotions and the feelings. And uh, this makes people cold. It makes people, uh, uh, um, you know, completely in this survival ego mentality. And when they're in that mentality, they're very in fear. They're very easy to control through that fear. But that doesn't mean that there isn't some something going on where, you know, the right brain uh, doesn't have some kind of dominance too, because uh, most uh, a lot of people are very much see. Because the thing is, a lot of people even that are starting to learn uh, how the brain works, a lot of people think that oh, there's only an imbalance in one or the other. No, there can be an imbalance on both, yeah. and uh, because you can have a right brain that is very. Uh, submissive and aggressive at the same time, but there's nothing in between. There's no work to bridge uh, the the both of the brains or both mm -hmm. of the hemispheres. So um, this is this is why we have such confusion because it's about chaos. If you if both of your hemispheres are either uh, you know uh, imbalanced one or the other or both. This is all confusion in between. There's no harmony. There's no marriage. And um, uh, there's no wedding. There's no uh, neocortex operating with, with the, you know, reasoning and logic. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, why uh, we see such a, a mess in this world. Because... Yeah. People just are not working on these aspects of the brain. Right. And then add into um, our lives trauma and stress, prolonged stress and traumas, which knocks the frontal lobes offline, basically. And it makes it, it, it severs the communication, you know, between the limbic system and the brainstem with the thinking part of the brain. So, you know, in, in, ther in therapeutic, you know, clinical work, we we emphasize when someone is um, very easily triggered from trauma, maybe has PTSD. Part of our work is to calm the brain, calm the limbic system and the brainstem, so that the frontal lobes come online, and we're able to to build that pathway, that communication, so that um, you know we can talk to ourselves. You know we can have that witness part that can see both sides and integrate the stimulation, the knowledge, and be on a timeline to know that now is now and not the past and not the future, because time kind of gets mixed up too. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's it's really, uh, where, where did... Where Derek did he... had to change locations. Uh... And so... Um, he's i'm probably listening here but he had to find a new location to be so he had to pop out apologize oh yeah. okay okay well I, I, was, I was gonna say something but i'll wait till he gets back but uh he's still listening um, so oh he is oh, okay yeah. well i'll still i'll still wait till i see him on here uh where he can you know interact but um but uh it, it's oh there he is 
Just real quick, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the I got, I got Brandon. Man. <laughs> Brandon came back home and everything, but uh, no worries. But uh, I got to hear this real quick before actually going to make a, a quick move. But uh, yeah, Nate, just to catch you while you're in the groove. I know yeah, you man. Speak it nice and smooth, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's yeah because it's your. I I really appreciate your uh, poetic wordplay all the time. Oh, it's thanks, very man. it's very awesome. Uh, very sure. you know I don't really know anybody that does that, but it's cool because I you know I Chris Jensen a little bit. Yeah, I, I but I but I see you know when I see somebody like that, what what I what I see is there's an exercise of. Uh, learning how words are much more than just their surface level right so mm. um like okay and, and this this is nothing too uh this isn't really green language that i'm sharing but you know i mean think of this you know great uh divide that we're in right it's a d vision it's division within but it's the d vision right to you know, divide the one uh, into the two, mm. and um, this is this is uh, very interesting when you think of the word marriage, right? Um, the word marriage comes from uh, well, when when you break it down, you have the word marry and age, right? And so the word marry when broken down is marry as a name right so you have the m a r r y and then you have the name um mary that comes from that m a r y right and when you break down the word mary it's very interesting because mary uh uh the etymology of mary is uh, to rebel or rebellious, right? Mm -hmm. So then you look up the de the etymology of rebellious or rebellion, and it means to rebel against government, right? Mm -hmm. And then you look up the word age, and age represents lifetime, or it, the etymology is lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. So you literally have to rebel. So marriage means to rebel against government for a lifetime. And that's the thing. Think about it. If people, <laughs> if people were uh, to bridge their hemispheres internally, okay, this would make a horrible slave. Yeah. For right? Sure. <laughs> so, so it yeah. is. So by marrying the self within, you are by that logic. You are rebelling against government forever. Yeah. And that's and that and that that's the beauty of it. That is the real dissolve of the division. Yeah. Dissolving oh, wow. the divide. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and think about this. Yeah. Look look at the look at the name uh Mary. Okay. Ma who who owns that name? Mother ah. Mary, right? I was you thinking know, of like Mary and Pippin from you know the Hobbit, but oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you Mary know, and he, he kind of owns it too. Uh, <laughs> that's true, but so, yeah. but you know the overarching uh, person who uh, you know well or idea or archetype that owns that name is Mary. Okay, well who who came before Mary? Well Isis. What does Mary and Isis represent as an aspect in consciousness? Uh, it represents care. Yeah. I, Ma, Mary represents care. Yeah. Isis represents care. So it's about to marry yourself is to care, to, yeah. to have that generative principle of caring, to find that, find your care by marrying the hemispheres, right? Do you see care as a, um, a principle that's masculine and feminine together? Not because I kind of think of it as feminine, but maybe the way you're describing it, I'm thinking that true care comes from the merging of both the right and the left. It is. It, well, it is. It really is. It really does come. God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm a, man, I'm a mess today. No worries, um, man. <laughs> forgive me. Um, but yeah, it's um, it is a mergence um, to merge is to care. 
That's really what it comes down to. But it is a sacred feminine principle because the sacred feminine has been um, buried. And this is, you know, also you have to remember sacred feminine is associated with compassion and empathy, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also uh, to care enough to um, to 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 come uh, to to work from the darkness, right? You because that's where we start. We start in darkness. Mm -hmm. So if you care enough to go do that groundwork, which is the light of the sacred masculine, that is the care. That is the care. The emergence it comes from the sacred feminine. But, you know, obviously, once you get to, you know, your sacred masculine self, the aspects of self, and you merge both of those hemispheres together, um, that, that it takes both. It takes both hemispheres, but you have to activate, um, you have to activate that part of the, the sacred feminine that has been, uh, it has been lost over thousands of years because we live in a, uh, you know, whether anybody wants to agree with this or not, we live in a patriarchal mindset. It's not that the society necessarily is patriarchal. It's the mindset. We live in a uh, more of a uh, left brain dominant world. Right. right. You know? So one thing that, you know, I realized was this I did the concept of intuition. Right. I, I see that as a feminine, you know, right mm -hmm. brain thing and we're not really taught or a given value to our intuition you know in fact we're um kind of taught to that it's silly it's woo woo it's you know you know that only the academic scientific you know stuff is what matters and you know because of ignoring or not being in tune with my intuition I made a lot of really bad choices you know especially in relationships and when I look back you know I realized that I had a hit of in an intuitive hit every time that I didn't honor or even recognize as such and if I had I would have been much wiser, you know, in my actions and my choices would have saved me a lot of suffering. And, you know, my m left brain was really kind of confused with all sorts of uh, arguments, you know, you know, and different points of view. And I could, and they all could have, you know, made sense, right? But the tiebreaker, the thing that really would have guided me was bringing in the feminine aspect of intuition and trusting myself, you know, in being able to use my intellect and my intuition together. So I think, I think there is like really importance to nurturing the feminine aspects and the right brain aspects in our lives. And, you know, I think we need to talk about like, how do we do that? You know, before we finish today. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I would just say that uh, the the right brain is, um, you know, because it's associated with creativity, because it's associated with compassion and, uh, you know, have an empathy, um, a lot of people might be shut off to that, right? A lot of people say that, you know, they, they, uh, they don't think that way. And, uh, uh, I've met a lot of cold people. <laughs> I've met a lot of people who uh, are not creative or they don't see themselves as being creative. But see, I think mm -hmm. creativity is one of the most powerful uh, abilities that we have as a human species because, um, and it is a sacred feminine aspect because it's about, you know, uh, creating out of nothing, Right. And so, and nothingness is associated with the sacred feminine. So when we are creating, when we start to be creative, we start to, uh, from, from my experience and from what I've heard from other people, this is what generates uh, appreciation. Um, and uh, to, to be more creative, I think that's why a lot of people um, start to look at the creator as something that it actually exists because uh to create is to become uh, a like 
to you know the creator who makes creations who creates creations and therefore uh there starts to build this um appreciation for things therefore you start to care more but obviously there you know you're you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to go into the left brain uh to strengthen the right brain in a lot of ways but um uh you know uh, you know looking into things being open minded being more open minded is a right brain trait and to to be able to uh listen without having an emotion emotional reaction right having your emotions in place like that that's uh something we have to strengthen in our right brain is our emotions but it's once we do we become even more open minded we become uh, that's what strengthens the right brain. That's what um, allows us to listen to things that might uh, go against our uh, previous beliefs that make us feel uncomfortable. And, um, you know, that takes a lot of patience and a lot of time. And, um, but it, it takes that effort. And a lot of people, you know, just don't have time and they don't want to put the effort in. But that's they what, and that's they don't want to make required. the time either, man. Yeah. Right. Right. It's almost so, like becoming like a child again, you know, in that receptivity, that openness, that critical period of eagerness to learn, the desire, the love of life, that everything is new, you know, and and open, you know, to receive information, right? That I feel like that is is part of how that feminine aspect gets gets developed you know it's like quiet time sitting in nature you know connecting with with touching things feeling things looking in people's eyes connecting you know you know attuning right to another person's nonverbals these are skills that you know I think part of the reason babies are born with those is because they're really important foundations and we don't want to wipe them out. We don't want to discount them as not important or good. They're really vital. Absolutely. Yeah, and it, it, it just seems already, you know, especially on the male counterpart, a lot of, you know, there's still a circumcision going on and that cuts off a lot of nerve endings. So already there's that traumatization with a lot of males. I was fortunate to be intact, whatever, but, uh, yeah, I've noticed that kind of with Nate, like just being kind of, and it's not like being too much into your feels, man, or whatever, just because you're a little bit, you know, imbalanced on the feminine side or whatever, or just like really in tune or sensitive with, with your emotions and this and that. But yeah, like finding that balance with the with the left hemisphere of just like just understanding the world around you, logically speaking, I mean, we mentioned the trivium, answering the who, what, where, when, why, and how it all operates around us, like 24-7, these are all laws of nature and codes of consciousness that are just in operation, whether we're breathing or not, you know, so. <laughs> so if we, if we open yeah. our feminine aspects to be curious and um, yeah. open, then that allows the masculine principles of, you know, knowledge or, you know, to come in. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially when there is a teacher, there's you know we we can only i mean here's the thing universe is always speaking so the universe is the ultimate teacher right um but uh the direct teachers in our lives being the humans in our lives uh these you know what they say what they write these are direct ways into the um the subconscious of the of of any being and that is a sacred feminine aspect and um you know so so it really does come down to um you know it really comes down to the teachers in the beginning to teach this stuff because uh, if we're if we're not being taught from an early age uh you know about these you know especially these hermetic principles um it becomes very difficult to understand this the, the spiritual realm. Uh, it becomes very hard to understand uh, how how the mind works 
uh, at, at the at the basis. Um, because you know that's what the Kabbalion is all about is uh, giving master keys. You know, so uh, the master keys that we learn as these these principles, they help us with everything else in life that we learn, and um, you know it, it's it's very valuable. Uh, but you know, yeah, it's very. What important. are what are some examples of the master keys? Well, the, the hermetic principles. Well, yeah, just the hermetic principles. Um, okay. Because you know, to have those master keys, uh, like I said, it's it's to open the doors uh, in all, especially all occult teachings, but really in everything, um, because the, you you really start to find all the dogma, and you really start to uh, learn how magical the whole world is. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't, I can't imagine going my whole life uh not knowing this magical universe that we can and when i say magic you know people right away uh they just they think of the exoteric magic which is you know some guy pulling a uh a, a, a rabbit out of the hat you know but i'm talking you know the the magic of um uh being able to um you know especially with words because words are spells right and so as we, you know, really start to uh, understand the world of the occult being the, you know, what's what's in the Kabbalion, the knowledge of the Kabbalion, um, we really start to see how we can take control of our life because internally, as we take control, we externally are able to, uh, you know, move in the direction of, well, essentially freedom. Um and that, you know, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Living by these sacred hermetic principles. Yeah. It's all about the state of the mind, which is where obviously it's been the main focal foundational aspect of this whole dissolving the, the divide. It's really, you know, getting out of that first gate and really understanding that and taking it from the law of correspondence from the micro to the macro and understanding the world that we're placed in and how it's so adjacent to just yeah like we're, we're born into this world from that womb of darkness into the light and just trying to become more enlightened you know even though there's like all this conditioning going on going on and all these external aspects that kind of take us away from our true sense of being in a sense because there is other you know, hermetic principles, if you will, beyond just, you know, the seven, you know, corresponding rhythm, cause and effect, vibration, gender, and what have you. But, you know, just like the law of suggestion, which is something that, you know, and you were talking about, you know, our, it really depends on who our teachers are and our te first teachers, of, of especially during the formative years, are going to be our parents and, and this and that, and like how many generations have not had the most conscious parents because, you know, their parents weren't and so on and so on and therefore since <laughs> so long ago, since maybe before these three initiates wrote the Kabbalion, for example, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, we have to kind of understand that the audience that we're trying to cater to is universal. So when they hear words like occult or things like that, they might not understand what that means. And no, I did not say a cult. I said occult, like occultare using your oculus to see beyond all these hidden things from us including the hidden laws of nature which is what natural law is all about and comprised of as well as you know just like the deep deeper depths within ourselves and what nate talks about in a lot of his presentations and i've known about your stuff for years man i really appreciate like that new direction and those presentations um and yeah, you're talking about the tracing board, the Masonic tracing board, which is like the most classical thing. I think I even had that when I was in junior college. This, and I had no idea what that was. It just over my head, it's like, oh, that looks cool. You know, checkerboard. I like to play chess. Like, those are some cool pillars. And oh, there's a ladder with a key. And like, wow, it's like all this mysterious stuff, man. What does it all mean? But, but yeah, like hearing folks like you break it down and like you flip it to the side and like, recognize and realize so many things and yeah it's like moving from that darkness 
to the light and getting that unity consciousness. And it's interesting, you know, the Sol O Mon, and how we have the sun, I'm a Leo sign, a uh, moon feminine with Leslie, and the star of the show, Nate Cap. How you doing, brother <laughs> man? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, we do have the Holy Trinity going here. Um, yeah, well said. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and, you know, uh, it, it, it just because this is something that I kind of uh, talked on uh, in the cubbyhole recently, what, which was um, what I find to be so special is when you understand Freemasonry, when you understand alchemy, uh, within Freemasonry, and you know about the uh, the sun and the moon being sacred principles of of our gender, right? You so you have the the sacred feminine being the lunar, the moon, the sacred masculine being the sun, and one of the one of the most beautiful things that nature has ever taught us, and this is the origin of marriage or the ring of marriage is when the two you know when there's a solar eclipse where the moon eclipses the sun and creates that mm. uh, that ring uh, around around the moon and then there's a little you know spark of of light that happens and that would be the diamond um, but that is the that is nature telling you know showing us these two seemingly uh similar orbs where one is just a little bit bigger because it has that light ring around the other meaning you know there's a there's a, a dominance okay there's a dominance from the sun over the 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 moon right um so that shows the submission and then the dominance of the ring around the moon um yeah but you can all you can look at it in both ways if you understand the principle of gender but but the point is is that you know, this is where we get, you know, the idea of a man putting a, a ring on a female's finger is because it's the male who puts the ring, the sun puts the ring on the, around the moon. Well, it's the same thing. The male puts the ring on the female. It's a, it's a, it's a very um, beautiful occult tradition, but really it's, it's right out in the open for us to see if we want to see it. Um, but uh, that that shows that magical uh, connection that we have to nature that is happening within ourselves. That's why there's a science of, of you know the sun and moon in Freemasonry because this the the universe the uh, solar um, the solar system. Uh, everything in the galaxy the the stars the constellations they're all there um in a in a in a beautiful way that can um demonstrate something that's going on within us because we are a mirror of the universe right. the mirror the universe is within us right so it's very beautiful because it's a, it is a mirror science of the soul yeah um, principle of correspondence and that's action. right absolutely you know when um derek you're talking about the tracing board two two thoughts popped in my head and one was how interesting that you turn the board another direction in order to see another angle another perspective to get knowledge and that seems relevant to how we um can find truth is that sometimes we need to change our perspective. We need to look at things from another angle. We need to turn things upside down, right? And if we want to gain wisdom, right, we have to be willing to look at all sides in Absolutely. a way. So that's one of my thoughts. And then the other thought about the checkerboard was like, you know, that seems reminiscent of the masculine feminine in separate boxes, right? Mm -hmm. Separate. Can you maybe bounce off of those ideas a little bit yeah uh well you know starting on the floor um the floor has many many um it has so much there's so much to the floor uh the floor is you know that is the starting point you know when you are the entered apprentice you're entering on the checkerboard floor this is the beginning of your 
journey into understanding yourself in a very scientific way, internal science. Um, so as you enter this uh, check onto the checkerboard floor, um, this means that you are, um, you have entered and you're ready to take on uh, this, this journey. And this means that you have, um, you've basically accepted that truth exists, right? But you are still a part into duality. And therefore, uh, you don't really know the difference between right and wrong. You don't really understand the difference between the, you know, the, um, you know, you don't have the understanding of the hermetic principles. You don't understand, uh, you know, the, the sacred feminine aspects, the sacred masculine aspects. And therefore it is a, the floor represents um, ignorance, but it, re but it also represents the place of foundation where you do your work and um you yeah know, sorry that's why uh, they call it base, base level consciousness right 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 so yeah. you're starting out in the base and um you know it's funny because like you know you think about the the uh the whole solomon's temple temple house right and what what do you what do you do when you go downstairs you go to the basement, right? The base, base mind. mind, right? So base mentality. What? Oh, I love that. Yeah, thank you. Right, <laughs> and so it's it's all about the house. I mean, that's one of the most powerful things that anyone could ever realize is ray. So when you're when you're uh, here's another thing. Each square, right, represents four. The four the four is material. So this is you're starting out in materialism. So what do you what is the goal? The goal is to raise up to the the three, the triangle, right? So that what 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 is a triangle on top of the square? That's a house, right? It's a temple. So uh what does that mean? That means you're raising your spirit, raising spirit over the material. So you're raising up out of your material self into your spirit self to create the house, the internal house. So it's even mathematically uh, corresponding, right? Because it only makes sense. I mean, how you know a good structure of a house is triangular on top of a square. So it's like the base level has the masculine and feminine separated like with with as distinct separate things and then the the integration is is that merging is that um recognizing that true wisdom comes from the marriage of both and it yep. seems like with that triangle the square is still held within it's still important yep and um and so the yeah, I think of it as well, like the physical is still important, right? Yeah, it's still that Absolutely. foundation that we're building up upon. So yeah, yeah. you got to start from somewhere just like everyone. And yeah. like the journey, you know, we got to take the first step and how, how Nate, you know, demonstrated in some of his, you know, presentations and what he alluded to earlier, of, you know, the the hero hero's journey and all that and kind of take it back to the fool card and all that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's, uh, think about this. Um, we live in a world of inversion. Mm. Yeah, exactly. The full. Yep. Oh man, that's a that's a very powerful card to understand. Uh, but but we live in a system of inversion, which means we live we live in a world where you don't even see the spirit. Because we're we have this square up top above the triangle, right? So it's an inversion, it's flipped. Right. And what we're trying to do is turn that back around because, and you know, this has a lot to do with that um the the whole board on its side. Okay. Um, because uh what what the Egyptians understood was 
um, to be rooted in materialism is westing. So there's this term westing to go west. Why is that? Well, because the sun sets west, but it rises east. And the rising sun means rising light, but sun setting means going into the dark. And so if we're in uh if we're in the west within ourselves, and that's why, you know, if you look at the uh inner apprentice, um the uh the carpet, the magic carpet, it has all these directions, right? East, west, south, and north. And so it's very important to pay attention to those directions because the directions are what help us understand consciousness. And, you know, think about this. When you look at the, uh, the tracing board on its side, um, if you if you guys are looking at it, uh, the, the uh, inner apprentice Solomon's temple on its side where both or all three pillars are laying on its side where the sun, the moon, and the eye are on the right side, okay? This, this um, if, you, if you look at it symbolically as the capital letter E, um, it is about finding, because it's, it's all to do with everything that makes sense with the capital letter E, uh, as far as what what are we what are we even trying to do when we're using these um, tracing boards? We're, what we're trying to do is we are trying to um, well, for one, we're trying to trace ourselves out. We're trying to trace our soul out over thousands of years of. Uh, people putting together pieces of art uh, as a science to understand the soul. We're trying to trace ourselves out to find what? To find equilibrium, to find balance. So the the three pillars on its side is, is equilibrium. It is the equator because it's also equating to the earth as the earth brain, right? Um, it is also uh, equating to, um, well, it's it's equal because it's the equal hemispheres. Um, you know, we have to remember that, you know, the, the brain has two hemispheres just like the earth. It's a correspondence. You know, Mother Earth um, is, we are made uh, as beings on Mother Earth corresponding. So that means that the health of us mentally the equal, the uh, the um, equalness or the uh, equilibrium within is reflecting on to the earth, and the earth is reflecting on to us. So we have to see it that way. We have to understand these. Um, uh, we have to understand the poles, and uh, and stay oriented. That, though, just like you said, Leslie, we have to stay oriented when we're. Um, that is what it's about. It's about finding orientation because mm -hmm. if we don't stay oriented, we we start to uh, lose focus and um, we can become uh, imbalanced. But it's it's about uh, finding a way uh, to understand how to equalize ourselves within, and that's what that that is the symbol that is is you know right there. It is the earth. E is the earth. Um, cause you, when you tilt it on its side, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at the earth brain. I mean, obviously it's our, it's our brain too, because it's a correspondence, but you're looking at the earth brain because you're trying to understand the brain in correspondence to the earth. Because, you know, uh, one of the, one of the things, um, that, uh, I keep learning more and more about is, um, you know, and I kind of just said this a little bit ago, but a healthy you mentally is a healthy land. So uh, the more healthy we become internally, the more that we see this earth become healthy. So that's why we must learn these sciences. And that's and that's not to say that, you know, you make it into this religion thing, but it's to understand it uh, uh, in a way to realign yourself, you know, 
to to um to find that that balance because think about it when our when you know i even think of the earth the the wobble of the earth i think of that as like the 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 universe or you know the the earth itself teaching us this imbalance right because sometimes we're in a equilibrium and sometimes we're not so there is the principle of rhythm that's happening constantly right. with the earth's right. wobble yes. right yeah. so we're kind of riding the earth's wobble uh internally as well and so we have to we have to that's why we have seasons and we have to go with it that's why it's this like beautiful flow and we want to that's what we want we want a really nice flow we don't want it like a really crazy imbalance. We want a beautiful flow, you know, like a really nice rhythm. And that's what, that's when we're raising consciousness, that's what we're getting to. We're getting to that beautiful flow. But now if we're in base consciousness, it's huge waves of, yes. of chaos. Dysregulation, dysregulation, right. you know. Exactly. Yeah, and sometimes the rhythm will get all uh, out of syncopation, you know. So we can, and trauma, you know, kind of bringing back to how um, we're affected, you know, trauma will dysregulate us. It will knock us off balance. It will, it will disrupt our rhythms. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I was thinking about this as we find our orientation and our equilibrium, then we're better able to know where we are in relationship to what we're looking at. Absolutely. Yeah. And then maybe better and, and know what we're looking at. Right. But if we're out of balance and um, not oriented to ourselves and where we are and our thoughts and consciousness, then we will not get a clear um, interpretation of what we're looking at. Right. I mean, that's uh I don't know if you got a chance to watch my presentation, Aim for Freedom, but what I talk about is the circled dot. And the circled dot is one of the most um, powerful symbols that anyone could ever understand because it's all about balance. It's all about, you know, you're, we start out in sin, right? Sin. Well, what is sin? Sin is starting out aimlessly right that's what sin means to miss the mark because you're aimless right so uh the the point of life the truth the focus the the clarity the sharpness the aim the um freedom because to not be going towards that dot in the middle means that we are staying in ignorance, staying in darkness, right? And so obviously we start out in a circle. We start out aimless. We start out in the sacred yeah. feminine, the sacred feminine. See, the sacred, fe and this is why they say, you know, the female's evil. That's exactly what they're, they're, you know, misinterpreting. It's about understanding that we're starting out in the sacred feminine. We start out there. That doesn't mean we're inherently evil. That's ridiculous. We're starting out in darkness and we're working our way to a point or because that is the focus. That's it's the focal it. point, right? And so that 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 is the marriage. That is, you know, br bridging the hemispheres together to a point uh, to, because that point represents the eye. Well, yeah. the whole thing represents the eye. But, it, but the point is, is, the point is that, uh, the more, um, you know, it's like a, I, I've, I've talked about with the pencil, you know, like a pencil, like the, the end of a wooden pencil before it's sharpened, it's dull, right? You can't really write with it. But as you sharpen your mind, sharpen the pencil, you are fine tuning it to a point. And that is the point that is the, that is a direction, you know, to what are you going to do with that point? Right. Um, I mean, and, mm. and there's a lot there's a lot more to that. But the point is, is that we're trying to find the balance. I'm telling you, it, there's always a point. Yeah. Right? The truth <laughs> is the target. Right. Did you get right. to the point, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm always trying to get to the point. 
Fuck, yeah, dude, yeah, I, I love that. The the whole synthesis of, and yeah, you figure, you know, this 3D cone of, of this pencil tip of the synthesis of of knowledge and, you know, that, that care of getting to the, the pinnacle unity consciousness, man. I, I love that. And without that care and true love for self, how are you really going to even marry yourself anyways, you know? So, and then you're going to try to love someone else? Come on, like, who are you fooling? So, <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, we just see these things in the law of correspondence. It, this is always, you know, in the cause and effect, these things are always working in tandem. You know, we're taking it from the internal and it's being projected in the reality field and we're interacting with all these other people and the whole collective consciousness and the minutia of all that stuff. And so, like, what what are we doing exactly? Are we being more of a like a positive factor? in society if we're you know like not imbalanced and not really truly loving ourselves or you know so i mean obviously it's kind of a rhetorical question but it's just for people to really just yeah understand that yeah it really starts with oneself and you know building that inner content to have that proper outer content just like for anyone like hey we're on youtube and odyssey and bit shoot and whatever the hell but you know like we wouldn't be putting stuff out right now, so-called content, which is kind of like, it kind of depreciates the whole value of what you're doing. Because like what you've been doing, Nate, for years is really sacred and you put like a lot of time and effort into these things. I understand like you guys really put a lot of years of research into, you know, making slides and, and you know, making the time to do it right and being well rehearsed on all that stuff i i got a lot of, a lot of love and respect for that you know art form and just craft and, and care of those things yeah and bringing that for you know to share with other people so yeah thank you yeah appreciate it um, it's like um how do we get to the point right you know when you're in <laughs> right. the circle yeah. Yeah. and you're swimming around in all the different places there's a method right you know right. and that would be the trivium to get to the point that's so right we talked to, to that a little well yeah okay so one of the most beautiful things uh to recognize is okay look at the word spiritual mm -hmm. you have the spire ritual mm. okay so it's the we are going through life on a spiral path and you know you can that's why in freemasonry in uh, second degree there is a uh, the spiral staircase. And when you're going up a spiral staircase, if you guys have ever gone up uh, a spiral staircase, especially one that's like maybe more closed off and or like concrete, uh, you can't see around the corner. You're kind of just, you know, uh, there's there's this faith that, you know, whatever comes around that corner, you're going to be able to take that on, right? But it's about staying on uh, the right path and trusting, trusting, you know, having the trust that because you're acting right, because your thoughts and emotions and actions are aligned and you're acting right in the world, that you are on the right path and you're trusting that path, but it's a spiral because you just don't know what's going to come. You know, it's not, a, it's not a straight line. It's a, it's, it is a, a, a spiral or a, a, a wind, Right. And yeah. so um, it's important to look at that circle dot, because here's the thing, a cert, you don't just go from the ring of the circle dot to the point. You go on this journey of a spiral to the point. And how do you get there? Well, you definitely have to be aligned to natural law. Mm -hmm. That is that is yeah, here. That's the thing. Think about this. A goal is goal, goal, uh, gold, and that's God, because you're going in the direction of God. You're going in the direction of gold. You're going in the direction of goal. So you're spiraling towards the middle. Then what is the middle? The middle is the marriage. Middle is the balance right so you're spiraling through to get to that point now what would and that's and that's also towards freedom right because uh being moral generates freedom so what is the opposite of that well if you're moving away from that dot or you never even go towards that dot 
uh, you are um, essentially going in the direct the wrong direction. You're going in the dark direction. You're going in the direction that moves away, uh, you know, that transgresses against natural law. You're going in the direction of ignorance. Um, and and you're going spiraling out of control, right? Out of control because you're not going to the middle. You're not you're not uh, aligned in the middle. And that is one of the most beautiful things that anybody could ever realize within themselves and within nature. So like a vortex. Right. Yeah. The whole yeah. universe is made of, uh, you know, these these vortexes, these um, these uh, spire, these spires, you know. So being, all through the universe being yeah. aligned with natural law and the positive aspects would put you on that vortex of energy towards the target That's and right. like you said you don't always know what's around the corner but you can mm -hmm. rest in knowing that if you stay moral that you will be heading closer to the truth and absolutely. to absolutely the golden you know, end of the rainbow but not necessarily, yeah, being cute with it, but uh, <laughs> just real quick, you, you mentioned golden. It just made me think, you know, that alchemical process, we're turning the lead-based consciousness to, you know, golden thought and action and idea and, like, mm -hmm. balanced emotion because, yeah, it's like emotion is our radar. Like, how is the quality of our thoughts in this and that and being able to, you know, just mentally navigate this reality and understanding certain things and having a worldly view of everything not just like an americentric view of just you know or a media centric view of and and yeah like i could be reading more books as well as you mentioned earlier nate or just yeah. but uh yeah just having, so, you know what, well, what you is will... it in... oh sorry well, you will, you will, you know, and that's the thing is uh, I, I love the fact that you guys see you're, you know, just give yourself credit where you're at, because honestly, there's hardly anybody talking about these things. And um, the, just the fact that you're open to it, the fact that you're willing to talk about this, uh, the fact that you guys have created uh, one of the most powerful uh, titles for a show, Dissolving the Divide. I mean, that's that's incredible. You know, be proud of yourself for that. Um, you know, that I'll be, uh, my uh, my show, my show outcasting, you know, I'm all I'm, I'm always casting out right from from the from the heart, right from the mind. Uh, but, you know, I as a symbol. I have the moon, the sun, and the the triangle, right? It's the trivium. And uh, you know, it's about that union and and um just being willing to to uh to know that see, because if you have the understanding of natural law, if you have the because you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but natural law is the crux that will help anyone on their path to truth. If you don't have the, the knowledge of natural law, the science of morality, you know, objective morality, if you don't have that, then it becomes very difficult. You're in the dark going towards light and uh, you're, you're, you're going aimless. That's why you have to have that, uh, that aim. Uh, the aim is, is, is alignment. The aim is alignment, mm -hmm. and um, that is why we have to, uh, you know, really invest the time from the point of natural law. You know, invest the time in the natural law. Get see that's why Passio says that uh, that is his most important work, and I completely agree it is because if you do not have the foundation of natural law, it we are never going to get out of this. We're never going to understand the reason that we have to go all the way back to ancient Egypt to understand where everything went wrong. You know, that's, that is the biggest thing that most people are not talking about, but that's because we don't have this understanding of natural law. Tom, Thomas Aquinas really tried to, to help us see this, but then, you know, he had his religious ties to the church 
But if but because someone uh, or a few people have come along, very, very small amount of people have come along, taken that knowledge and stripped it out of the religious institutions and brought it into light. And that I think Passio did the best job at that. But the point is, it's like if we don't take this serious uh this this natural law uh and everything associated with natural law because here here's the thing natural law is an unfoldment there is no such I, I don't believe that there is any such thing as you know once you learn natural law that's it you know uh that's ridiculous because uh the magic and the beauty is continuing your journey with natural law to the origins because origins is where we're going to, you know, I mean, that, and that's, that's about finding our care is going back, you know, once we have that natural law, go back into antiquity and really learn, uh, um, you know, really have, have a, a sturdy understanding of anthropology and really just uh, understand where this all needs to go. Because, uh, you could ha you could have this like very basic understanding of natural law, and that's mm -hmm. oh that's better than nothing. But you could have that, and you can still be manipulated by the sorcerers, the dominators of this world, with no problem. And you and people are. I mean, you look at yeah. look look inside. And here's the thing: I don't, I do not want to sit here and belittle the truth movement. I, I'm so sick of hearing that. Like. The truth movement, you know, they they're getting all this stuff wrong, but uh, and yeah, they are. There are things they're getting wrong, but let's focus on the things that they're getting right, man. I mean, uh, yeah, they're probably not working fast enough, but man, it takes a while to get out of this mind control. You know, yeah. it's not easy, and uh, you know, we we have to labor once, but once we get that come to that crux of natural law, that's when we're going to really. That's when we found our care. And that is when we're really going to become more uh, married within and be a contender against the evil of the world. Yes, yes. It gives it gives us a, a stronger foundation in a way, too. Like above, I would say, the checkerboard floor. I don't know. Yeah, totally. For sure. And uh, and for me, like, I had, like, a really unique awakening where it's, just, like, like, on a vibratory level, it's, like, just, like, I had things activated within me where it's, like, I just became aligned to certain codes of consciousness as i like to refer to it you know back before i even heard of you know the mark passios and manly p halls i was listening to max egan and stuff who talks about that good old in la, in la Kesh, uh, the agape and all these things that you know ties into so many things and there's you know like there's not one single author of you know these universal law cosmic law natural law all these things you know that we can learn a lot from certain individuals like the Manly P. Hall, Seth Exposa, Mark Passio, and, and Nate Kath, you know, like other cat, like go to one great work network. You're going to find dozens of people that are, you know, speaking the same language, you know? Yeah. And I, I really appreciate everyone doing their part to, to make that happen. Sure. You know, like Brandon Spencer, you know, all day. Yeah. Just put out something. And it's not a religion because he just put a presentation really debunking any notion of the fact like, oh, like, Oh, so natural law, what is this? Is it another religion? No, this is not some kind of head cage program. This is something that you just realize and observe in nature, observe within yourself, you know, observe your thought patterns and test it out. This is a science of life. You know, do you understand the causes of your own effect or the effects of your own causes? You know, right. yeah, so, no, you can say either way. Both ways. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, oh, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, just to finish off, like, but you always have to keep in mind that we're in this collective consciousness and, and you know, as above, so below, corresponding to everything around us in our immediate environment, you know, to wherever, you know, the cosmos within us, that cosmosis, as we like to call it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, <laughs> it is uh, very it's 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 extremely important that we um you know celebrate people doing good work and um i i don't think that's done enough uh amongst you know this 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 uh, um this 
um, I don't want to say group of people, but this, uh, this, uh, you know, these, these people that understand natural law, these people who understand to a degree of, you know, slavery has taken place to a degree that, uh, government is evil and it is, um, slavery. You know, these, these people are really trying to put information out the best they can. Um, and obviously there's always going to be room for improvement, but man, I mean, and, and it's good to, you know, really, uh, it's good. To, it's good to show where things are wrong, but, you know, it's better to be constructive mm -hmm. um, because that means that people are going to listen. People will listen more when there's constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm better at that, but here's the other thing is like, you know, uh, it, it is, it is important to understand that if we are um, being, you know, uh, <laughs> yelled at or, or criticized in a, in a way we don't like, that is also a form, there is also a form of emotional mind control taking place. And we have to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I wanted to say something about what you were talking about with natural law, um, because, uh, you know, religion, and I maybe you already know this, but, uh, you know, religion is about binding, right? Well, that is exactly what natural law is. So therefore, it is, it is, it's not a religion. It is religion, period. It is, that is the thing, uh, the law that binds us uh, mm -hmm. to, you know, our consequences. And, you know. The law of one, kind of. Right. It is the law of one. And it is, you know, a lot of people don't really understand natural law. Like, what is, what is its, like, absolute purpose? Well, I can tell you from what I understand, it is, it literally teaches you a lesson. <laughs> we would never learn lessons in life without this law. So yeah. it could be the law of lesson, <laughs> you know, a uh, moral yeah, lesson, right? Karmic law and all that stuff. Moral lesson. <laughs> moral <laughs> lesson. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's like... Um, and that the lesson, I mean, what is that for? It's love. It's to, it's to move us into greater and greater growth and evolution to develop our potential to become all that we can, you know, all that we can be, right? right. And, I, and I was thinking about this whole idea of like, okay, the dynamics are complexified, right? When you venture from one person to two people, right? Or more, right? And, and then from the context that we're all one in right. ultimate reality, and that's ultimately where we, where the, we seek to, I guess, merge, I can understand that oneness. And, and then I was thinking about the three, right? Is like, you could say how it could be manipulated by a third party, the one and the two, can be divided by a third party or uh, manipulated triangulation and yeah. right you know and programmed you know if the ones aren't aware of their oneness and you know more uh awake to to this and and there's also the synergy of the combined ones to create that greater uh, thing you know the creative spark comes from I think probably the masculine and feminine coming together I think of the the the, the feminine aspect of creation being the risk the receiving of inspiration and this like creative thought of what could be that's not yet in existence with the masculine aspect of doing you know taking that energy in and create in and actually manifesting something from it so that marriage you know in in that masculine feminine synergy is uh an energy source too to something greater right it's like our potential yeah. it's a creative power for sure yeah. 
Yeah, like uh, our last guest, Mario West, put it, you know, she she stated this umpteen times and, you know, hundreds of videos of, you know, moving, you know, conscious co-creator, moving, you know, formless into form, in a sense. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and something that is always interesting to keep in mind is that, you know, all these, you know, laws in operation in the universe, uh, in this world, whatever, anywhere, whether people think space is fake or whatever the hell, you know, like, worry about the space within yourself and if it's all on good terms with the universe. Because guess what? The universe does not even know that you do not know of what's going on within, you know, like, and there's, you know, a difference between ignorance and nescience. And all these things, and uh, I'm gonna bring this back because Nate, uh, yeah, Nate, I love what do you <laughs> you mentioned this in one of your presentations, and you just have like a, a solitary video on this, but you know the <laughs> the pun or just the play on words, if you will, uh, of this, you know, taking it back to the base level consciousness, so we can rise above it again, because we are inundated with a lot of stuff, and there is a little pun intended with that in regards to being floor eyed mm. uh mm. you want to just like bring that up and kind of just you know bring some uh dilution for a better solution of you know like well yeah that, i mean it's <laughs> water it, contamination yeah it's uh well it's interesting because water is feminine right so uh to poison the water is to really destroy the sacred feminine yeah so if the eye is on the floor in materialism because remember it's not it's not just a, a you know uh uh i didn't make the eye uh, up above in between the pillars i put the eye on the floor i put the eye as the floor and the the, the eye also has the checkerboard floor on it because it's about being completely in base consciousness. Um, but uh, it's, it's more so to see that our, our uh, sacred masculine and sacred feminine have been wickedly destroyed in our collective, right? And because the eye, the key is on the floor, which is care, right? Um, and that means that if care, if care is on the floor, it means no one cares. Yeah. And the eye is also, uh, concrete because it is not able to see it is, it is, it, and, it, and you know, it's funny because, uh, most people don't know this. Um, but, uh, one of the inspirations for that piece comes from the symbol of Pepsi. Uh, so if you put the symbol of Pepsi, the newer, the new Pepsi symbol uh, on top of that, because Pep is, uh, you know, um, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, what is it? Energy, something about, uh, I can't remember what the, get what a little means. pep in your step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, but, right, right. But pep, what does Pepsi do? Pepsi, the is it, yeah, it's the opposite. Pepsi and Pepsi's made with fluoride. Come on, let's be real. Uh, they don't put in uh, filtered uh, os reverse oh. osmosis water into that drink. Yeah, you're but, right. But but the funny thing is, is so I when I saw that it had the red, it had the blue, and I thought, oh, because that corresponds to the brain. It is it apart into duality. And it looks like, it literally looks like a really tired eye, mm. uh, sleepy eye, right? So I so I just kind of uh, copied that, put it in there. And, um, uh, and it's because, you know, when I was getting into green language, I realized, oh, be, and it, it wasn't just green language. It was, I was getting into the, the first degree and I was like, oh my God. Fluoride is literally fluoride, uh, and the eye is collectively our eye is on the floor because care has been it hasn't been found. Um, you know that we 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 have to rebuild the sacred feminine and sacred masculine. 
right? They're there. You know, obviously we're always going to have them, but we have we have yet to fix them, to fix, uh, to rebuild uh, our hemispheres, uh, to rebuild the pillars, and to, to reach the sun and the moon, right? Um, to activate the sun and the moon, to cause the the sacred union. And you know, obviously, there's not not even if you look really carefully, you can see Jacob's ladder, which represents the middle pillar. It's just broken behind the uh the sacred masculine um but it is it is about understanding that we have been dominated um by the dark occult but we have definitely uh done this to ourselves collectively and uh, and you know this the water obviously the water being poisoned it's it's bad for your pineal and that's also the eye the eye is calcified concrete and right the third eye the third eye is on the floor it's in concrete it's calcified uh that is what the floor eye is the floor eye is so in a, a way like the cor a correspondence in society is that men and women have been polarized there's been you know efforts you know to make it difficult for men and women to unite and stay united, you know, to the marriage is our failing, you know, all yes. over. And so there's not that persistence uh, uh, whereby the masculine and feminine can fully unite in, you know, in that place of, you know, um, wisdom. And so there's, these correspondences in our lives and and how do you see that you know the pepsi symbol reminded me of that it's like there's an, a division between right? right how do we bring back you know fix jacob's ladder you know well yeah and then jacob's ladder is uh is what appears to those who are rebuilding or or are building because remember, uh, being a mason means being a builder, builder. right? So, uh, well, you know, and it's supposed to be understood internally. So we are all masons because we're we do build within, but what we're doing is we're manifesting an uh, um, external experience together. We're building this um, this experience together as masons. Yes. And, um, you know, we're all in certain degrees, you know, uh, there are people who are at the lowest degree of being a Mason, but really you could also, you have to look at, uh, Masonry can be, um, uh, it can be wielded in the wrong hands in a very, you know, dark way. Um, but, you know, to answer your question, I mean, and it is like heavily, it's heavily being uh, wielded in a very dark way. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's just, let me, let me just say something real quick before I uh, get into that. Um, uh, for anyone listening, um, you know, there is a, you have to understand there's a difference between this, this is something that I probably should have said early on because I see so many people attacking Freemasonry um and it is i mean but there's a reason for that the reason that people are attacking it so much is because there's this you know um well for one it's ignorance but also it's about understanding that they want us to fear and go on a witch hunt after anything that can uh create union within so when you hear people saying the Freemasons did it, you know, the Freemasons are evil, Freemasonry is the devil and all this stuff. It's like, okay, well, how much homework have you done to actually understand that? But the truth is, is remember this. One thing that people keep getting wrong, there is no such thing as a, uh, a, a um, uh, Freemasonry does not equal Freemason. Freemason is a person. Freemasonry is the tradition, the science, right? The art. So we have to differentiate and understand the difference between the two or we stay ignorant. And uh, I'm telling you, if we stay ignorant, uh, 
you know, to this occult tradition, we will continue to see slavery get worse and worse. Um, but that's what they want. They want us to, con you know, continue to, you know, go on a witch hunt after anyone associated with Freemasonry. And it, it's, it's just unreal. Um, but, you know, that's, that's what happens when the R complex, you know, control system of the world is like, oh boy, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> do anything possible to keep our control. Uh, yeah, and just have so much dogma going on about anything sorry to cut you off but i mean yeah i, I really wanted to get you know either brandon or, or douglas martin on to you know have a segment specifically about you know light versus dark freemasonry and all this stuff and how you know like it, it, it's just kind of like knowledge or so people are going to pick it up like a tool they can wield it for good or bad and whatever you know that kind of stuff right yeah any tradition you can do that with any knowledge yeah you know um, which is why you know the laws of nature are being inverted and perverted against us for specific reasons you know to keep us in a state of slavery uh discombobulation con confusion and, and yeah imbalance so where you know we don't truly know each other our, ourselves and each other and just like not being able to yeah so bickering and fighting yeah where, where's that key to unlock that you know broken heart of just you know like the divide of yeah not only that the, the loss of the sacred feminine which is kind of that yeah the the lost principle of care if you will as certain people have mentioned it but yeah yeah and, and you know i think um it, it is if we're really going to be serious about learning the way in which we are divided um, well, we're going to have to look at the core um, beliefs, the core, I mean, the absolute core beliefs of our worldview, because we're, that's the thing. We're, the only way that we're going to change our worldview is to look at where we're so uh, centralized in our belief system, um, which is, uh, if we're in an imbalance, it is a prison it's a mental prison it's a you can either be in your you know right brain prison or your left brain prison um and these are worldview schisms right and uh you know so we we definitely have to understand um randomness and determinism because this is really i mean if we don't understand how people are so trapped by these uh, centralized beliefs um then then we're really never going to find that that middle point and uh you know i can expand on that if you want but i, I i'm sorry leslie i you you asked a question and i completely uh no it's a, it's okay of... i i was just my brain is like expanding from you know we have our internal uh process of unifying the left and the right and then then I'm thinking about the complexities of then adding another individual who's in a different, you know, place of balance within themselves, but working towards balance, hopefully, or unity, and just how complex that can get and how uh, without this awareness, it's so easy to like manipulate or pull apart or um, sway us and create a lot of chaos and distraction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To be to be in dualism means that you know your hemispheres are away from each other. They're not wedded, and therefore they can become you know like you were saying the one going between the two, mm -hmm. uh, and that it like a wedge, right? It is mind control to spread them out. Yes. And and that is because there there has not been the the work the necessary work. So most people have not done that internal work. So it's so easy to just go right in the middle and control from the middle uh, and get people to go one direction or the other. And um, by doing this, this is how they divide and conquer. This is how they divide and conquer the mind first. And then by doing that, because this is what good, true government is. Government is divide and conquer. 
right? Because it's about it's about mind control first, right? So to to control the mind, well, you've already got the body right where you want it, the physical body, right? So then it's you look at all the divisions going on, and there's a new. It seems like there's a new psyop and division going on every freaking week these days right and that's because we're becoming more conscious of it i believe too but also i think they really are ramping it up because they realize consciousness is raising that they realize that there really are people starting to have the wedding and so because i've even said you know uh, it's kind of like uh I kind of associate Godzilla with all this stuff because like Godzilla would be natural law, right? It, it, uh, the knowledge of natural law, right? It comes when it needs to come. Right. And so when the world is in chaos and there, there's this new, you know, global domination world, new world order, great reset. Well, there's also an opposite of that, which is the great reset into natural law. You know, to reset ourselves back into nature. And, um, you know, that is, uh, that's something to to really, you know, keep in mind. But, you know, it's, we, we have to be aware of the playbook. Um, and the playbook of the dominators is where we're really going to learn how to find this wedding. Um, yeah. Because then we're going to know what to uh, protect ourselves from with our, you know, because it's about building spiritual armor, right? Spiritual armor around the heart and the the uh, the the brain and the soul, right? Because it once we really build that spiritual armor, that mm -hmm. is when we are starting to care. That is when we're starting to realize, okay, these divisions are prisons and we have to escape both of these prisons in order to unite in the middle to be free you know because the prisons the prisons are on the outside but the the middle is the you know i mean it's like the circle dot the middle is is freedom the middle is where we're going to find freedom and um uh as long as we're kept in that circle you know as long as we're kept in imbalanced in our hemispheres that then you know it's just it's just a constant chaos it's an easy place to manipulate people yeah you know when they're in fear and when their emotions yeah. and fear are in a cyclical pattern just constantly going back and forth they're not even operating from their neo neocortex um you know they're just it's just the the mammal brain the mammalian brain and the r complex are just uh, just constantly in that circle there's yeah. nothing being raised from there. Uh, you know, that's why people are in this, these habits, you know, people yeah. have bad habits, right? But if you, you know, break the habit and raise yourself by doing the work, the great work, that's when you're really going to be a, a true form of resistance to evil. Yeah, well, very well said. <laughs> really cool. Yeah. The, the image of the high priestess card popped in my head. And when you were talking about the invasion in the space in between the columns, right? And that that's a really, um, it seems like that's that the high priestess is there at the gate, right? Maybe to protect that space, the beauty within. And and it's interesting that it's it depicts the female, the feminine, um, to be in that spot of observance right and um i don't know do could you expound a bit on that a little bit well uh the tarot card yeah i um, guess or is does is what i'm saying kind of fit you know yeah yeah for sure i mean you know because it it, it is um yeah can you bring that card up a little closer uh well i guess i can't really see it um that's okay that's fine well because you have to understand um you know the feminine being in the middle um this is this is a reflection right and uh, we're supposed to understand it as a reflection of self we're supposed to understand you know this is care um you know there's there's no coincidence that the uh the moon crescent is a c right for for care you know to to uh the the cradle 
you know, to care to in and, and also natural law. Natural law is a is feminine and because it is nature, right? Because it's the you know the the nurturing aspect. It is the you know the natural world um, that is uh, creative. You know that's constantly creating. But um, you know. Uh, with with tarot, if if I were to be honest, uh, you know, I'm not so advanced in tarot, um, mm-hmm. but you know, like I I do like to break down the uh, symbols, and you know, but that's why I was even having him try to hold it up because it's not etched into my mind yet. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know, the more that we, I'm the same brother, you know, I'm not trying to front. I, yeah, you know, I don't understand all this, but yeah, you but, know, but, I've but, heard um, enough. To... There, you know, if I were to look at it again, all oh, the Torah. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, you know, what the she's Torah, holding. Yeah, the Torah is really interesting because you know that's an anagram. You know, uh, it's tarot, it's Torah, it's uh, it's also uh, ro- ro- yeah, rota. It's uh, it's one. There's one other one, um, but it's about understanding the the zodiac, um, because there's four ways to understand it, four cardinal points. And um, if you if you are to really understand uh, natural law further, then you'll go into astrotheology. And, you know, that's what that's about. And, um, you know, this this is uh, this is very important because if we are to advance in natural law, it's going to have to go into the science of the zodiac. Well, that's one one aspect. That's one part. And so the more that we, um, you know, and that's, you know, she's holding it. That's, you know, and remember, she represents care. So you have to care enough to go uh, uh, into that, you know, rotating, you know, rota, the in your in, in the Torah, look into the knowledge of the Torah, look into the knowledge of the tarot. And because you're dealing with the, uh, the pillar of, you know, Joaquin and Boaz, the black and white pillar, you're dealing with uh, Freemasonry, you're dealing with this, the, the principle of gender. And so, right. Um, and, you know, obviously you can see the, uh, the, the tree of life in the background and, you know, where everything is associated. Her, there's no coincidence that her head is in Da'at, you know, and the, the 10th um, Sephiro. And um, it's, I, I'm telling you, it's, there's, so, God, there's just so much to open up. Uh, yeah, that moon, I love that moon crescent the, with that little. Yeah. Um, it's thing. like the, the flowers in the back are making the Kabbalah, right? The, the tree, yeah, the tree of tree. life. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so many um, connections, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And see, that's the thing, like, I think, okay, just like that, uh, you have, for one, natural law first. This this is just how I understand it. Um, and, you know, other people might have different ways of how they approach this. But I, I say natural law first because it's about the crux, right? Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, if you go into Freemasonry without natural law, you, you go in the dark. And um, honestly, I don't think you could ever really truly understand Freemasonry without natural law, because for one, you, even even when you get to the second degree, uh, there's in in true nature, there is no way that you can even pass in the second degree without understanding natural law. And the the thing is, is that it actually, you know, because there's tons, I mean, Freemasonry is uh, the, the the esoteric teachings of Freemasonry are filled with encryptions or green language. And so, uh, you know, the, the second degree is the past degree, but you cannot pass. Thou shalt not pass uh, the second degree without understanding this law. And um, so I, I forget my point. Oh, so that natural law is the crux but then I would say because Freemasonry is at the center of all esoteric teachings, right? Yeah. Then, then that means that it. I think it's better to learn Freemasonry uh, and then learn 
uh, Kabbalah and tarot. And I would say Kabbalah and tarot uh, can be learned together because they are, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm even working on a board right now, like a really big board uh, uh, made out of Masonite. And I'm going to make all the Sephiro with all the tarot. And I'm going to uh, make a video of that eventually, someday. It's on a back burner. But um, I think that that's a really good way to learn both. Because you really can't understand one without the other. But then Freemasonry is at the crux. It's at the, at the base of these teachings. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, and it's because... Uh, you know, uh, Freemasonry is heavily demonized. And there's a reason for that. They go to the root. The the dominators go to the root. They're trying to suppress nat- the knowledge of natural law and Freemasonry because they don't want anybody to know these things because these are what make uh, uh, an unfit slave. Yeah, right? that's their modus operandi. And uh, yeah, yeah um, I'm going to post some links in the description, but uh, just while I have you on right now, that anything off the top of your head that, you know, would be a great resource or reference to look into that, you know, really talks about the pure, you know, mystery teachings of Freemasonry, for example? Well, yeah, I mean, um, anything to do with Manly P. Hall, um, I'm sure yeah. you guys are familiar but he, with. But a caveat on him, because I even heard, saw things on Facebook, like, like, oh, like someone dismissing his teachings uh, a man I hold near and dear to, and same with Brandon Spencer, but uh, like, yeah, apparently he was, you know, an honorary inductee to like 33rd degree masonry, or whatever the, you know, that's it, just sounds like gossip, even if that's true, whatever. But at the same time, it's like, it's not like he was, you know, ensconced in that or whatever. But at the same time, it's like, it, it seems like they're trying to demonize him, oh, and yeah, Freemasonry at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all anybody who has come out of the lodge, or, you know, the actual uh, physical lodges and taught Freemasonry is heavily demonized because you know a lot of a lot of Mason, well, all all lodge Masons are under oath, and so because of this, they can only say so much when they're under oath, and. Uh, <laughs> Man, the, the the Masons I've been listening to, and I, I really try to listen um, openly all the time to anyone I can who is talking about Freemasonry, who come, who came from the Lodge. And you can learn a lot of very powerful exoteric knowledge from these like individuals. Like Ran- Randall Carlson, for example, someone like him? Who? Randall Carlson? I believe Carlson. Uh, Does that ring a bell? Is he from the Rubicon Lodge? I, I'm not sure. I got no idea. But yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah, probably. I mean, but, but, his but look at popular. Manly P. Hall. Manly P. Hall came out and he taught and he did not care. I mean, I don't know his full story, but I just know that that man is heavily advanced in this occult. Uh, well, all the mystery traditions. Um. You can yeah. learn. You can learn so much from that man. I mean, you. Uh, he has made enough knowledge to. I mean, where you could just learn just from him, and still, uh, you could just you could study one of his uh, lectures for five years and still keep learning. You know, I mean, uh, mm-hmm. it's it's just that much knowledge, and I I have a high high appreciation for that man. I mean, he was. Uh, and in, he really deserved the 33rd degree. You know, most Masons don't deserve the 33rd degree because they're not, they're still frozen. You know, they're still heavily frozen. They're frozen in, in, uh, in authority, man's authority. But, but anyway, the other people that I would recommend are uh, Albert Mackey, who did an incredible job on the, um the uh um encyclopedia of freemasonry he did you know two volumes well he did you know all the all the letters um and uh, i mean i learned so much from that guy uh uh just uh you know you just can't you can't stop learning from these these men but i mean that's his great work 
And uh, you know, one of the one of the most powerful books that I have of Manly P. Hall, other than you know the book that most people know, which is the Secret Teachings of All Ages, but there's the other one called The Lost Keys of Freemasonry. Um, I highly recommend that book, and I highly recommend uh, where was the other one? Uh, there, there's something. Um, I think it's called The Sacred Flame, uh, but I, I, I could be wrong. Uh, that's his first book. Um, I think I'm saying it wrong, but it's something to do with the the flame, the sacred flame. Um, it's really, I mean, it's just incredible that that man was already producing uh, work in such an early age. Uh, but but uh, but then yeah, man, you know, I kind of, I almost consider you like. And I was thinking about this earlier before our chat, you know, kind of like, how am I going to introduce this guy and this and that, you know, like, even though, you know, like, we haven't really been acquainted all that much. We did like a round table once or twice. And that was cool. But uh, yeah, just reflecting on on some of the people that are really just like devoting their lives and their free time to things like in like I feel the same way about Brandon Spencer, you know. I keep bringing him up. Why? Because I'm like, in it. <laughs> it's like, you guys have the potential to be the next uh, main with the halls. You know what I mean? That's all I'm going to say. Well, I, uh, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I definitely don't. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I, and I mean, fortunately and unfortunately, I was, uh, I was a, a super degenerate, you know, for a long time. And, and, uh, you know, I never had anybody in my face trying to tell me anything uh, that would help me, you know, uh, be better. Um, I mean, I had a few people that s spoke of, um, the, you know, they like the, uh, what are those people that come Jehovah's Witness? Jehovah's Witness, yeah. yeah they, they, they were the people that I talked to uh, early on that really tried to get my brain thinking about certain things. And I'm very thankful for that because even though I completely disagreed with them pretty much on everything uh, and still do, um, they definitely got my brain thinking about things that uh, I never thought before and, you know, got me questioning things. And um, it wasn't just them, but, you know, like uh, getting into uh, Eckhart Tolle really changed my life mm -hmm. um, at early on. But, uh, but uh, I, I kind of, you know, and like a lot of people, they come into the game or game uh, late and not having any knowledge. I never read books when I was younger because I was, like I said, I was uh, degenerate. I didn't understand. See, I never had the right books to read. And there is such thing as right books because right books are all about trying to understand the self, trying to understand the world you live in. Those are the right books. Uh, trying to understand how to be a better person. Those are the right books. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have access to any of that other than maybe the Bible. But then I thought the Bible was just a bunch of BS uh, because of, you know, how I was raised. And um, and the thing is, is that um, uh, Manly P. Hall, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I you know, if, if anything, I just I hope to be uh i hope to be someone more like him i i look up to manly p hall more than pretty much anybody who has done the great work yeah. and uh you know i i i definitely try to align myself and you know i don't completely agree with everything he says but i love i love i loved his attitude right you know i love what i've heard from him his attitude and you know, it's, it's awesome that we actually get to listen to him. Yeah. Um, In his own boy. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but his words are just uh, the way he writes his style is just, mm -hmm. uh, it resonates with me very, very deeply. And so does Albert Churchward. Mm -hmm. Albert Churchward, Churchward is, um, you know, one of the greatest Masons that's ever lived and uh, Freemasons that's ever lived. And um, he uh, he 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 made seven amazing books that you know when anybody who's getting really serious into Freemasonry definitely look in his work, yeah. and uh, you know there's Charles Lee Beater and there's um, 
Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, there's uh, Br something Brown. I can't remember his name. Uh, you know what you might do is if you think of other people, text them to us and we'll put them on the um, underneath the show. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I had a question about, um, well, I just wonder because it, it seems that the Freemasons are men, right? And I'm wondering, well, how, why is that? Why are women not in the lodges and what's the significance of that? Um, yeah, well, sounds sexist, man. No, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I here. This is just my own interpretation or my own uh, way of seeing it. It's not something I fully have looked into, but there are, you know, there is such thing as the Rainbow Tribe, uh, which is a, you know, a very low level um, Masonic lodge for women and uh, typically older women. The stars, the Eastern stars. Oh, yeah, the Eastern yeah. stars. And these, you know, um, these, these are really kind of like uh, the Shriners. Mm. You know, the Shriners are basically like, a, they're an exoteric Masonic Lodge. They're kind of like uh, people who will do something for you if you do something for them kind of thing. And they uh, kind of have a, they have a little bit of, uh, you know, higher rankings um, because, well, you know, like I said, there's a lot of Masons that don't deserve the 33rd degree and a lot of Shriners get this so-called 33rd degree in their lodge. Donate um, and, money. And, and, and yeah, and, I, and I'm not, I don't want to sit here and bash on all the, the Shriners or all any of the people in these lodges, but what they're, what they're not doing is they're not helping um, you know, take the knowledge, you know, we live in the age of information. They're not bringing the, if they have knowledge, they're, they are being occultists. They're holding this knowledge and they're not helping humanity as it suffers immensely. Um, but they, but they have a lot of money. You know, these people have a lot of money They're They are, they can be secret societies, but they're really not, uh, they're, they're out in the open. Um, but you know, but the, you know, their money exchange is in secrecy and, you know, there's all kinds of, um, uh, you know, things that are just, um, very, they're, they're very surface level. I mean, and, you know, they do good things for their community, but I, I think a lot of it is just virtue signaling, you know, just to say, Hey, I'm a, I'm a Mason and I'm, uh, I'm helping I charity and, I'm, you know, and, and I'm not saying like, that's bad. Uh, but I'm saying that they're, uh, they have, they definitely do not have any idea of the esoteric teachings. Um, because if they did, if they had an understanding of natural law, then they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. And uh, therefore, they don't deserve the 33rd degree at all. And, um, you know, that's, you um, that's my take on it. Sure. There's a lot more to it, but. So Derek know. had to truly move and we lost him. So I hope he can come I'm back. Sure. I just realized, um, I just realized that. Yeah, quickly. But I, I was thinking for, we're getting close to really needing to wind down. I'm hoping Derek comes on before we finish, but um, I wanted to get some, see if what your, Based on your knowledge base, you know, and your understanding, what do you, what would you say is the path to dissolving the divide from your perspective? Well, I mean, I um, again, I think it really comes down to um, being more open to the idea that you're in a polarized dialectic. And that means that if you're someone who's super, you know, uh, based in religion, try to be more open minded, minded and see that maybe uh, you're in an imbalance and um, go more into the left brain aspects, go more into the left brain uh, ideologies, uh, you know, go uh, be more, be more skeptical, like a, an atheist, you know. Um, because, you know, there, the thing about being an atheist is it's about questioning this, 
you know, religious doctrine that we're taught from an early age. That's why a lot of people turn, go into atheism. And I think there's there's a healthy reason for that. But, you know, obviously people get stuck in that religion because that's what it is. And mm -hmm. it becomes something worse, much worse. Um, but, you know, it's the same thing with the left brain. If you're more left brained and you are able to, uh, you know, see that balance is such a good thing to have, Um a lot of left brainers I've talked to, they have very difficult time with right brain um, ideas or right brain aspects, and because of that, they just they're like, "I want nothing to do with that." You know, that's all. You know, hooklum. You know, that's there's you can't prove anything. Uh, only science can prove everything, and uh, therefore materialism, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so people in that I, I the way i've reached them is you know um with the idea of balance because balance is you know about meeting in the middle and if you're if you want to see the world get better and you're in a left-brained imbalance you're going to have to be open to the idea of rebalancing the self and that means going and doing more uh you know more of the things the right brain aspects to um to really uh, bring that bridge together, to really close the gap in yes. between. And, um, you know, we have to realize that, you know, when we're in, you know, so for instance, to be more left-brained, you're probably in a, uh, yeah. your, your worldview is probably going to be randomness. And if you're if you're in a more in a right brained imbalance, your worldview is going to be determinism. And therefore, if you believe that people have been talking about um, determinism and creationism for thousands of years, that there's nothing to that. Um, well, you know, you're going to have to question yourself if you're more left brain, right? You know, coming from a random perspective but then if you're right brain and you think everything is just determined preordained mm -hmm. uh there's nothing there's nothing you can really do to make changes because free will doesn't even exist well then uh you're going to you know stay stuck in a right brained imbalance a prison and so i i think it really just comes down to um we're going to have to bring you know, bridge the gap uh, of the um, determinism and randomness components together to really see what they're about, because there really is, you know, people just don't understand that the, the deterministic component is just law that we can align to. It is law that binds us. But then, you know, the randomness component is having that free will to choose, uh, you know, right action um, uh, or wrong action, right? Um, but but it's about uh, fine tuning the self constantly. If you really care to have this, the most beautiful ritual uh, within the you know the alchemical marriage. I mean, that to me, that's the most beautiful ritual anybody could have. I mean, at least from my perspective, um, you're going to have to, you know, if you if you want to be free, you're going to have people are going to have to individually work on these aspects and be open to the fact that they're not in a balanced frequency. And people, I'm telling you, so many people are so quick to say, oh, I'm balanced or, oh, I, ah. I know natural law. Oh, I'm I'm a moral person. It's like, okay, well, that's great. Huh? Yeah. They're they're pretty confident, pretty cocky about it too. And I would say even more so disrespectful um, by saying those things like that. But it's like, all right, well, then if you if you are if you got it all figured out, how come you're not teaching anybody? How come you're not, you know, uh, bringing it out in the open and helping other people? Yeah, it's like not even lip service. It's like lip, 
this service so much. <laughs> right, exactly. So there's qualities of being open-minded, being yeah. fle flexible, right? And willing to consider other points of view, other perspectives, to be willing to go to the other side of the continuum on polarity, to be curious, to care, and to care about truth, to believe there is truth, right? To know there is something, um, there's a destination, there's a point, <laughs> and uh, that we do seek, you know, a balance and not just a ping pong game between one side and the other, but an actual integration. It's not, I, right. I, yeah. I mean, you, you simplified it so well, that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that is what it's about. Um, it is, it is that it really is that simple, but the work is not that simple. Right. right? Uh, Easier said than done. Yeah, exactly. Always. Always. Yeah. 100%. So, so we, I think we're um, we're at a good point for completion here today and um, really fascinating. I, I so appreciate the, your point of view, your knowledge that you're sharing. Um, your, oh, look at the lights where Derek is. <laughs> I'm in Sin City. It's been shitty, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, having conversations like this really holds it down and keeps things you know grounded yeah. and all that well, stuff. You're, uh, i'm sorry for the cutouts and distractions and everything everybody. well you're bringing but, yeah. you're bringing good energy to that <laughs> yeah. yeah right yeah, yeah that's what me and brandon are doing we've been doing that for the past you know 36 hours or whatever so yeah it's been yeah, look at awesome. the violet the red and blue combined into the violet color behind him isn't yeah. that Boom. yeah the purple so yeah. how is this <laughs> High frequency yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, any final words, Derek? Uh, yeah, Nathan, thanks so much for everything you had to say. Uh, you touched on so many great points, and you really got to the point in many ways. And uh, I, I love your approach and your demeanor and, and cadence uh, about how you, you know, articulate things, you know, over the years and this and that. I'm not going to ramble on, but uh, everybody check yeah, out Lake Cap's work. Yeah, Puppy Hole Seed. There's uh, conferences with loads of information. You can go to, I think it's uh, seed.com or something like that, Nathan. But uh, no, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you. Yeah. Nate, where do we find you? Um, yeah, you can find me at cubbyhole.com, and that's C-U-B-B-Y-W-H-O-L-E.com, oh. and uh, you can find my work and Brandon and Douglas Martin's work. Um, you can also find my outcasting show that I do solo uh, for now. Um, you can find that under Nate, uh, and it says outcasting at the top, and um you can also come uh, follow wh where I'm, where most of my activity is taking place on Telegram under Outcasting with Nate Cap. Mm. And uh, you know, I haven't been so busy on there lately, just due to you know certain things going on in my life. But I'm definitely going to be more active on there pretty soon, and I'm really excited for my show because uh, it's very synchronistic to start off a show like this because one of the big things that I'm going to be getting into is the great divide. And I'm going to be getting in, I'm going to be covering, covering as many aspects of the great divide as possible, uh, it, you know, for the purpose of bringing uh, people, you know, information for people to become conscious of, because, you know, that's the purpose. Um, and also, uh, yeah, there is another seed event in the works, and I don't think it's going to be this spring from what I've heard from Brandon, but I think it is going to be possibly in the summer solstice. So uh, we'll see. Uh, either way, there's definitely an, another seed event on the horizon, and I'm really excited for it. I actually just did some art for it, the cover, and I'm excited to share that. Yeah, because and... Nate, real quick, I mean, like, you this is going to be the fourth installment of these uh, uh, conferences. And uh, yeah, yeah. the last one was uh, seed three. It was uh, the sprouting of that well, seed, C right? It was seed four. Oh, okay. So you guys can do the fifth one. Okay. So yeah, like. This is going to be <laughs> the metamorphosis. 
Met him. Oh right. yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So With that pretty... photosynthesis, you know, the light shining on yeah. it. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to it, and uh, I'll definitely be. You know, last time I did the conference, I was uh, you know not in the best. I was in a you know I was spiritually in a good place, but uh, not not in the good place in uh, um you know, where I was living and, uh, you know, just a lot of things were, were, you know, not quite correct and, uh, things didn't work out so well in the last mm -hmm. seed conference, even though it was an awesome conference. Uh, I was not all there, um, unfortunately. And it was, uh, but you know, it, it was, it was just because, you know, um, a lot of things just were going on in my life. And, uh, at that time, but at the, this time, I feel like I'm going to be a lot more prepared, um, you know, uh, just getting on and doing these shows um, for anyone out there who ha has trouble, you know, being, you know, doing live events or giving presentations. Um, I, uh, you know, fought through that my my whole life and I still am. And um, just because I, you know, I had a really weird crazy bad uh you know traumas that happened to me in my childhood and i'm really getting over that finally and feeling you know more confident and more uh aware and more awake to how important all this information is and um you know i'm really just doing my best to be my better version i mean that's what it that's what it really is all about and that's what it comes down to and um you know so i'm i'm you know not trying to, you know, make a whole story, but just, you know, I, I, I just want to share that because, you know, I felt like I kind of let people down the last time I did that conference. And, you know, I didn't know that I was going to be, uh, you know, speaking, or I didn't know I was going to be, uh, being a host at that conference necessarily. So it was, it was a big surprise and, you know, um, uh, Brandon, man, Brandon is, uh, he's a great worker. Uh, I mean, he's a, he has done some huge things and I'm, I'm very thankful to, you know, that he is my family, uh, my direct family, but also way beyond uh, Skatopia, man. Yeah. He's, <laughs> right. And he's, um, he's a great friend and, uh, he's a, you know, tremendous, uh, worker in this, in this fight against, you know, evil and for freedom. Um, uh, so you know, hey, I'm really building something beautiful this. right now at this new place. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. all doing that. We're all doing a little part of that great work. Right, so. right. absolutely. Yeah, I'm, yeah. So I just, you know, I want to give credit credit where it's due, but also I like to, you know, uh, from time to time, just you know, kind of reflect on some things that I have have done, and I never really have had opportunities to to speak, you know. Uh, uh, live about certain things and you know i just uh <laughs> try to choose when is the right time to say it you know so but i, I really appreciate you guys having me on this show i think what you're doing is uh very commend commending uh commendable and i think that um again the uh, dividing the or uh you know um dissolving the dissolving div the divide is the ultimate goal uh mm -hmm. for freedom and uh, i think mm -hmm. you know you guys are really on something here and uh, i can't wait to see what else uh you know who else you bring into the onto the table and um uh to see what else gets brought up i, I can't wait to see you know how things are going to unfold because i know that uh, it can get very tricky in this, uh, you know, bringing up this divide. And for if sure. people aren't ready for it, it, it can be, um, you know, very, uh, very hard, hard pills to swallow for a lot of people. And, um, you know, so, so for you to really, um, uh, you know, uh, make, make your, this, uh, this show all about that. I, I just think it's, um, it's awesome. It's really awesome. Thank so. you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Nathan, thank you so so much for, you know, bringing such a beautiful version of yourself uh, to this table and everything, you know. Yeah, your authenticity. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't notice, you know, 
what you meant in regards to your last presentation on the seed conference, but you know, I hear what you're saying and, and feel that at the same time, and, and just you, you know, yeah. recognize you another, well another soul. Critics. Yeah, just trying to you know do better, do right, and uh, refine all of that. You know, it's uh, just that daily operation. I think it's a great role modeling, really, of of stepping and doing the work and take having the courage to, you know, it's scary. It's a, there's a, a certain level of like trepidation to go out and do videos and presentations and roundtables and all of this, right? And I think that's another thing, really, for us all to keep in mind during the, all of these dialogues is that, you know, we uh, none of us are going to be perfectly correct all the time about everything or perfectly articulate or, you know, so there's a certain, we're all human, right? And so there's um, a compassion and, um, you know, patience and, you know, that's needed for all of these dialogues, especially as we get into more controversial, you know, triggering topics, you know, we have to recognize we're all humans doing our best, trying to um, do some good in the world. And we're going to have uh, differences or disagreements or mistakes, you know, and that this is all part of stepping up to being a, a good human, um, to have some humility and uh, flexibility again, right? So we uh, have these conversations. All right. Well, I think we got to close this one up. And again, thank you so much. You know, I appreciate both of you so much. And I feel really honored to be part of this. Uh, yeah, time. likewise. Nathan, yeah. close it off for us, please, and, and tell tell people real quick where they can find you. Uh, Cubby Hole with a W. Yeah, com, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. CubbyHole dot com. Yeah, and you can find uh, the podcast, uh, and it is in you know both uh, audio for the Cubby Hole and video for the Outcasting, and they are in a stepwise progression. Um, you know, you can go out of order if you want, if it, but it, but it, it's, it's better just to go in the progression. So that way, you know, where I'm coming from. And, uh, I think you can, you know, really appreciate the body of knowledge more that way. So. All right. That's awesome. Everybody look up Nate's work, looking forward to more conversations and we're just going to keep plugging away to dissolve the divide. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Bye, thanks, everybody. guys. Appreciate it. Big cap. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Deoxy. Nuclear, consider activation. I cover earth as she enters the lost stages of transformation. Refining self to a state of spiritual gold. A substance only the innermost elders can hold. This is the journey of the soul, the path of perfection, the awakening of the inner Christ, spirit resurrection, the alchemetic marriage. Return to the heavenly palace. I found the center of self and reestablish my balance. This is the journey of the soul, path of redemption, the awakening of the inner Christ, spirit resurrection, the alchemetic marriage, the phallus, the chalice. I found the center of self and reestablish establish my balance for what the journey of the soul, the path of perfection, the awakening of the inner Christ, spirit resurrection, the alchemetic marriage, return to the heavenly palace, I found the center of self and reestablish my balance, this is the journey of the soul, path of redemption, the awakening of the inner Christ, spirit resurrection, the alchemetic marriage, the phallus, the chalice, I found the center of self and reestablish my balance.